Brad Lang, thank you for joining us here in, in Munich uh, on the 75th birthday of Douglas Lang. Uh, I'm not asking you about Douglas Lang, actually, I'm asking you about your part in uh, in the um, Douglas Lang. So how did you start? I, I mean, it's a family business, but you didn't start in the family, did you? No, uh, not immediately. Uh, what was rather nice was that my father was a great believer in the university of life. Right. And when I was 16 years old at school, he took me out of the summer term and we traveled around South America, which for a young Scotsman, yeah. quite parochial in his outlook. To see that side of the world was fascinating. He did the same the following year when I was 17. And then actually I joined a White and Mackay mm -hmm. on what was regarded as a an apprenticeship, almost Victorian apprenticeship in style, uh, where I was put into different departments mm -hmm. uh, to work. My first boss was Major Hartley White, off White and Mackay, and he introduced me, I have to say, to a lot of the secrets of the the blending and the sampling room. Mm -hmm. I then went on to work for White Horse Distillers, doing something similar when they owned Craig Elliche and Lagavulin Distilleries. So I was learning all the time, making my mistakes at the expense. <laughs> of other companies, which was something my father held dear to him. And then when I was 21, he felt it was appropriate that I might be given a position within Douglas Lang and company. And of course, in those days, we're still small today, but we were tiny. We, we had mm -hmm. probably a, a staff of about seven or eight. So I was on the bottling line. I was labeling the stock. I was helping my dad with some of the blending. Yes. Was it always clear to you that you wanted to join the family business? Not specifically the family business, mm -hmm. but certainly the whiskey business. Apparently from an early <laughs> age, I was showing all the signs of what uh, well, what was to lead on for mm -hmm. me, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, Very nice. So uh, how would you describe the, the, the soul of Douglas Lang? What, what makes you different? I think the soul yeah. for me, yeah. if you might get a tear here, but the soul for me trickle, trickles down from my father. Uh, he was a great guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he had come through what was quite a hard war and they, they always developed a Carpe Diem style. Mm -hmm. And so from the time I could remember him when I would be two or three years of age, uh, this quite handsome man who you might vaguely recognize from the Epicurean mm -hmm. label, vaguely. So that's uh, him? Not exactly, because his mustache was not <laughs> curly Q, uh, but he had a little 1940s, 1950s mustache. My mother always used to say, never trust a man with a moustache. So I'm in, I'm in real difficulty already. But, but my, my father had a, what I would call a swashbuckling, buccaneering spirit. He loved the challenge of a new sale. Uh, he loved developing new blends. He loved developing new packs. Mm. And, and, and I think that's come down through me and my, my daughter, Cara, has got it better than me. But there's a, there's a real interest that we have in our end clients. And that was pushed into me in, in these early days when I used to travel with my father in South America. Meet the people, meet the end clients, enjoy their company and give them hopefully the enthusiasm you bring to the product so it, it's uh, it's what we call FDL, Fred Douglas Lang. It's the, the Douglas Lang symptom, okay. um, top down. Yeah. Talking about family business, your daughter Cara plays an important role in the business right now. What, what is she doing exactly? She came in very marketing oriented. Mm -hmm. She's got a real eye for detail, very creative. She also worked for Wine McKay mm -hmm. on the Dura brand. She jumped ship and worked in one more, 
Laterally was also working on Ockentoshin and uh, Glengarry. So she brings a lot of marketing expertise with her, far more than I will ever bring. And now she's, uh, in my books, she's been groomed for stardom. Uh, she, she will be our chief executive officer in the not too distant future. Uh, she does not feel she is right there yet. Mm -hmm. I do feel she is right there now, but she's a, she's a modest girl. She's getting a, a good group of directors mm -hmm. around her, which will probably exclude me one day <laughs> in the not too distant future. Uh, but I'll be, I will always be there for her. I'm very proud of her. And, and she, she's the one who will drive the company forward. What when you retire? Do you want to do? I want to keep, I want to keep my finger on the pulse. Okay. Of <laughs> of Douglas Lane, these brands are so important yeah. to me. But at a distance, I want to give Cara total mm. freedom to to control things and move things on. So, I only took up skiing when I was fifty. I see. So that was twenty three years ago. That's still a challenge. So I, I enjoy my ski holidays in Österreich. Uh, I'm still trying to achieve an international cap for squash. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I'm not far away from achieving an international squash cap. If this year goes well, I was playing in Aberdeen and I was knocked out two days ago in, uh, in Aberdeen at, in the semi-final. And you're laughing at me. I, you should not laugh at me. <laughs> Although I like to smile uh, myself. Uh, there are challenges, uh, but for me, uh, if I can occasionally see some sunshine, which we do not see in Scotland, um, play a bit of tennis and some mm. warmth, gain an international cap and still enjoy my skiing, and the apres skiing is quite important too, uh, that will do me for a little while, I think. Seeing what you have achieved in whiskey, I have no doubts that you will achieve everything you want in, in squash as well. Fred, thank you for your time. Thank you for the interview and enjoy this wonderful evening here in Munich. Yes, I'm enjoying it already and uh, very kind of you to give me your time. Thanks very much. <laughs> thank you. Your pleasure.